The Power of Words, Death, and Killed in the Israeli-Palestinian War. The terminology used in media narratives holds the power to shape our perception of events and conflicts, making it a focal point of scrutiny in the discourse surrounding the Israeli-Palestinian War. Two words, death and killed, are often deployed in these narratives, and their implications are far from trivial. In this analysis, we will delve deeper into the use of these terms and the potential biases they introduce into media coverage. The Nuances of Death Definition, death is a neutral and broad term that signifies the cessation of life, encompassing natural, accidental, or intentional causes. In media reporting, it is commonly used when reporting casualties without explicitly specifying the cause. Implications The term death is frequently regarded as impartial, as it does not attribute blame or intent. This neutrality can align with journalistic principles of objectivity. When death is consistently applied, it humanizes all individuals affected by the war, underscoring the shared tragedy of loss regardless of nationality or affiliation. The impact of killed. Definition, killed, is a more specific term that suggests a direct, often deliberate, act resulting in the death of another person. It implies an element of intent and agency. Implications. Killed carries a moral and legal weight, implying an act of violence or homicide. It often attributes responsibility to the actor causing the death. When killed is selectively employed, it can potentially frame one party as the aggressor or perpetrator, while the other is depicted as the victim. The reporting dilemma. In the Israeli-Palestinian war, the choice between death and killed becomes a sensitive issue. The perception of bias often stems from how media outlets apply these terms, as they may cater to their audience's perspectives or align with their editorial stance. But the right word to use when we speak for Palestinian casualty is killed by Israeli forces because the media use the word killed only for Israeli casualties and death for Palestinian ones. The prevalence of these stark hypocrisies within media narratives is a cause for deep concern. It is evident that many media outlets seem to be entangled in a one-sided narrative, struggling to portray events for what they truly are, a protracted war that has persisted for 75 years. When we delve into the statistics, the picture is strikingly clear, there are casualties on both sides. However, when we focus on the Palestinian perspective, we are confronted with a heartbreaking tableau of funerals, photos, videos, and a relentless cycle of bombardments from the Israeli side. In stark contrast, there is a conspicuous absence of such somber ceremonies on the Israeli side, no collective or individual funerals that stand as a testament to the toll this prolonged conflict has taken. This disconcerting imbalance in media portrayal raises a fundamental question about journalistic integrity and impartiality. The historians of the future will be the ultimate judges of the actions of these sporadic journalists who have failed to fulfill their core duty to report events as they truly are. The annals of history will not be kind to those who, through their biases or omissions, fail to document the full extent of the human suffering on both sides of this protracted conflict. The need for balanced, empathetic, and comprehensive reporting has never been greater, and the responsibility rests on the shoulders of the media to rise above these challenges and fulfill their vital role as the chroniclers of our time. The Journalistic Challenge Journalists should aim to provide objective, impartial reporting, but the Israeli-Palestinian war inherent complexities make this a daunting task. Balancing the presentation of facts with an acknowledgement of the multifaceted nature of the conflict is a perpetual challenge. The choice of terminology can significantly influence the reader's understanding of the situation. The media's role in shaping narratives. Media organizations wield substantial influence in shaping public perception and policy decisions. Therefore, they should bear the responsibility of choosing words carefully to ensure accurate and impartial reporting. The terms death and killed are not mere words, they are instruments that mold our understanding of the Israeli-Palestinian war. Their use can contribute to perceived biases in media narratives. It is imperative for media outlets to exercise the utmost care and responsibility in their choice of language, seeking to provide comprehensive, balanced, 
and context-rich coverage of the ongoing war. The power of words should be harnessed to foster a deeper understanding of the multifaceted realities on the ground and promote empathy and dialogue among all parties involved.